Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the most popular items in New World and how to get them right now. So this is a very easy segment because we're going to basically be starting on New World Database or nwdb.info and going straight from there. So the first item that comes to mind is going to be, of course, the Bloodsucker Sword. It has 29 strength, leeching crosscut, enchanted, and life stealing. With leeching crosscut and life stealing, you're going to do insane, insane amounts of life stealing overall. And then, of course, enchanted, never a bad option as well. You can see that this is dropped by Maceo or Red Claw. You can actually see exactly their locations here on the side as well. If we take a look at Red Claw, you can actually see the loading of the map, and it's going to be right down in Crimson Shallows inside of Evanscale Reach. It's a very strong weapon that a lot of people are going for because they love the idea of self sustain through the weapon. And that's exactly what you're going to get here. You can also see Maceo, if you guys don't know who this is. It's basically an unkillable place or unkillable mob right now. We don't know exactly where he's at or what is he doing because, well, where is he? Nobody knows. Still no location on this guy. We'll hopefully find that out soon. If you know, let us know in the comments because I would love to know myself. So done with number one, the next number two is probably the most commonly used pants in the game or most commonly sought after pants in the game across many different people. It's the regular pants. We've talked about it many, many times before. Resilient plus Shirking 4 is a basically best in slot if you get freedom or refreshing, and that's exactly what we have here. We have refreshing. So regular pants, an obvious winner here in this case, and that's why everybody is going to Hecka of the Crossroads down in Brimstone Sands and trying to kill the Hecka of the Crossroads for these regular pants. Most of the time, you'll find them right by Heliopolis, or you can see here as well the location in the north side. That's why people are always standing in these locations farming Hecka. So we have two down the drain. I want to continue on, though, into our top 10 most popular items. So here we have the Cortouche. The Cortouche is a very cool item because it's going to actually give us health, divine, and fortified recovery, making it really, really close to a best-in-slot amulet jewelry for things like war, for things like anything revolving around a strength heavy tank because you're going to get the fortify you're going to get more heals you're also going to have more health so why not go for this here we can see it is by hiri whore which is an ancient mob and you can see the exact location is not a thing so here your doesn't spawn maybe sometime in the future by xyo which by the way if you don't know who zio is he's the admin of the new world database site does a lot for this channel and the site in general. So definitely, uh, if you see him, show him some respect. He's he's a guy that knows a lot about New World and how to make a website so user-friendly. So this is an item that is not available yet. When it is available, though, we will make sure you guys know how to farm it because this, like I said, is a best-in-slot amulet for a lot of different jewelry, or sorry, a lot of different you know tankier dudes running Strength Con. Let's continue on, though, to number four, which is Heart of Magbadol. Mag... Maha Bagul. I, I honestly could say this eight times and say it different every time. We have basically the reason people want this is because we have hardy, keen awareness, and slash damage. So it's another great item to use or a great ring to use when you're going up against, uh, well, thrust as well because it does have a thrust gem in there. But the main thing is you're going to use this if you're a tankier guy running strength con or any strength build in general with slash damage because slash is going to be your increase here and then plus you have the strength obviously on the ring. Another best in slot. This one drops from Kindred Shu Magbadal, which is the middle guy in Heliopolis. Um, you'll see him. I mean, like I said, a lot of this information you can find on New World Database. I just want to kind of cover these today in this video so you know how to get to them, know where they spawn, and why these items are so, so good. So now that we've gone through the first four, number five is Blessing of the Forefathers. This is a very, very solid and basically best in slot jewelry yet again. Divine Health and Fortified Recovery with Strength is pretty much what we saw a just a second ago. So let's take a look and see if it is exactly the same. Uh, and they are the exact same amulet, which is kind of funny. Uh, but Blessing of the Forefathers is definitely worth going for because if you guys see here, the doesn't mention a specific mutation level. Uh, it can drop in any mutation, so you can just farm it by M1. So if you take a look here, it's a corrupted mob inside of, I believe, this is the Inead, correct? I believe this is Inead. Let me see here. Um... I actually don't know. No, sorry. It's the Depths. I thought this was the Inead, but then again, that wouldn't make much sense. So this is the, the Depths that drop the insanely, insanely good weapon 
uh, that is, or sorry, not weapon, but jewelry that is the divine health and fortified recovery, which is, like I said, best in the slot for a lot of strength con users. So we continue on. We've gotten the first five down. So I want to get into the best or sorry, the next top five when it comes to these popular items. That's going to be the Bone Chopper next in line. This is the best in slot Angry Earth Bane that you can find for PvE if you're looking to do Genesis. It's got Keenly Fortified, Rogue, and of course Angry Earth Bane. It's going to be, like I said, best in slot for a lot of people when it comes to PvE Angry Earth. And by the way, Angry Earth takes more damage to Hatchet than most weapons in the game. So, this, like I said, is so, so good for Genesis. I expect you guys, if you are big Genesis runners, to go hunt this down. You can also see that there is a price on um, on this weapon, which is kind of crazy. Sell price, 60K. I don't know if it can actually sell, so this is interesting. I guess it can. It might be a legendary named that can actually sell. And if that's the case, and if it's sitting here at 25K, 60K gold, I would highly suggest people go running this down, even if you don't want it yourself. You can see it's dropped by a couple different mobs. We'll go over those in just a second. Dropped after five minutes of farming from the first tendril, WTF. Bought one for 4K, best investment ever. So at least 10K, or sorry, 10 hours of farming and everyone in my group getting except for me. I finally got it. I had all my full void bent set with pearls. So full luck. And he said it didn't help much. He doesn't think. Obviously, we don't know. But it's dropped by a couple different ways of getting it. Here is the tendril that they just talked about getting it. So we'll use this one as an example. It's over in Great Cleep. These are the tendrils that are supposedly dropping the bone chopper. Very, very worth running over to Mangled Heights and checking it out, seeing if you can get this drop. Because like I said, it's selling on the market for 25K, 60K, 50K, depending on what server you're on. And then also it's best in slot for Genesis Mutations. So let's go a little bit farther back here. Okay, so now we have Legate's Ring. We've talked about Legate's Ring quite a bit. It used to be gatherable from, from one of the bosses in Heliopolis, I believe. But now Legate's Ring is actually only going to be farmable. In my opinion, I've gotten, I don't know, two, three, four of them from the Sulfur Chests. If you guys don't know what the Sulfur Chests are, it is basically those pits of, um, you know, those areas where you go in and you basically get uh, insanely high acid damage. Those are going to be, those chests right there are going to be the ones you want to loot. I've, like I said, I've done probably, I don't know, 15 at this point, 15 chest runs of those sulfur chests, and I've gotten three or four myself. So if you do them every day, continue to grind those out, and you will get the Legate's Ring eventually. It's very, very good because it has leeching, keen awareness, and of course, slash damage again. So it's basically the same as that previous ring, maybe a little worse, maybe a little better, depending on your build, because you're switching out leeching for hardy. Typically, you're going to want hardy, but leeching, if you're going to a full leeching build, this could be very, very solid. A best in slot for full leeching. So, glowing life staff or life crystal staff is definitely one of the best in slot life staffs in the game. People are changing this one in for Will of the Ancients, making this maybe the most sought after life staff in the game. So, if we take a look here, we can actually see that it is dropped by Zhao Taying. Xiao is the boss in Eternum, of course. It says it in the top right. I was hoping it would say the exact uh, location. I believe, like I said, this is Dynasty Shipyard, and that is going to be able to drop you the best in slot life staff, which, like I said, glowing life staff, or sorry, glowing life crystal staff is the best in slot life staff right now for a lot of people, depending on what build you're running and how you like to play. Next up, we have the Matt's Blessing. Matt's Blessing is another divine health slash protection focus ring which is huge huge or not ring sorry but jewelry huge 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 amulet for life staff users you're typically dying to slash protection or sorry slash in general when it comes to arenas maybe oprs but when it comes to wars you are going to probably want thrust protection just from those or physical protection at least from those muskets from those bows but in this case slash protection if you're looking and you're dying from slash quite a bit this is going to be a great great item Great upgrade for you. Uh, and you can actually see Judge of Purity is the one that drops this one. Judge of Purity is going to be in Brimstone yet again in the top middle, pretty much. Um, and you guys can, like I said, kind of see this location here. I'll zoom in a little bit. But that is going to be where that one drops. So now that we've gone through nine different weapons and armor, let's get into that number 10. It's the Doom's Chance Earring. The only reason people are going for this is because, well, it's a fairly solid ring. It has refreshing toast, regenerating and refreshing. It's very close to best in slot. I typically don't take regenerating. I would rather have purifying toast or something of that nature, but regenerating is considered very, very solid. So regenerating, refreshing toast, and refreshing, you can actually see it's dropped by 
Alavium Merle, the Caretaker. It's also contained in the Garden of Genesis Arminate. So it's going to be in Garden of Genesis. It's the Alluvium Marl, the Caretaker, that drops it. And that is going to be your number 10 slot. And this is kind of just a runner-up here because there's a lot of great stuff on this list of popular items that people are looking up for obvious reasons. But one that I really want to kind of mention real quick is a best-in-slot Ancient Bane uh, hammer. This is one that I've seen a lot of people hunting after, and it is great to do so because it is a, like I said, best-in-slot Ancient Bane Warhammer. It gives you thwarting strikes, sundering shockwave, and of course, like I said, the Ancient Bane, giving you strength as well. And this is very easy to farm. It's the Bithicate or the, what is it, Bathicate of the Cudgel, which is up there in Heliopolis. A lot of you guys have probably had a chance at this one already, but this is going to be kind of the bonus that is worth looking for if you are somebody that does PvE and does the Ennead, does, uh, you know, some of these ancient dungeons. It's definitely worth going for. So that was number 11. We will talk a little bit more about some of these other ones, and I want to cut out and kind of jump into certain ones that, in my opinion, have a lot of reasons to be going for. And one more that actually I have to talk about because, you know, if you haven't seen this yet, it's the only amulet in the game, or in, really, I think it's the only item in the game that has double luck. So, Infinitum or Infinitum, I don't know how to say this one again, Infinitum Band, I guess we'll go with that, has Focus and Dex, which is kind of trash, but the big reason you're using this is because it has the double luck perk. So, 2.7% chance at rare items from chests and monsters times two is going to give you a nice 5.4% chance of uh you know getting those rare items from chests and monsters which is the max amount we've seen on any piece so you can actually get this from Averis. Averis is inside of the internal pool and he's actually going to be that uh, little arena in there that little trial you're gonna have to actually kill him and hope for this drop because it's a once in a lifetime drop i haven't ever seen a double luck in any game really and it's great to see that there is one unique one and there is one reason right now to run those arenas other than the gypsum orbs so great to see overall hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video hopefully you learned a little bit about what is floating around inside eternum and some of these new items and weapons and gear that you should be hunting for thank you guys again for tuning in make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and if you guys haven't already make sure to jump over to twitch.tv slash iGraphGuy. we stream every monday 6 p.m thursday 6 p.m saturday 6 p.m of course so i'll see you guys all in the next one